campaign. I'd like to welcome you all this afternoon. Um, the campaign is a campaign for the establishment of a community neurorehabilitation team in each of the HSC CHO areas, the nine CHO areas. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by a number of speakers um, from the CHO region this morning um, who are going to outline uh, what having a local community neurorehabilitation team would mean for people living with neurological conditions in, in CHO 7. And um, before I go to that, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the Patients Deserve Better campaign and just the first slide there, Emily, if that's OK. Um, so the campaign is um, a safe for a network of community neurorehabilitation teams. These are multidisciplinary teams based in the community that provide essential rehabilitation to a people with a range of neurological conditions. Um, anything from, from Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, acquired brain injury, stroke. And our colleague from our members in, in Piedmont Healthcare this morning is going to talk a lot more about what those teams do and the need for them in particular within CHO7. Um, I'll just say I'll reiterate this through, throughout the afternoon, throughout this, this lunchtime session, um, but just that the um, there was funding assigned for a community neurorehabilitation team in CHO7 as far back as 2018, but unfortunately, we've yet to see a team on the ground and we are calling in the Patients Deserve Better campaign for the elected representatives that are joining our launch um, this afternoon and we're delighted to have them in attendance. Um, just to 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 represent and, and highlight that that we really need to see this team on the ground now that funding has been has been assigned. Um, just to say that uh, if you have any queries or questions, please do put them in the, in the chat function today. We'd love to, to hear from you. We have a number of the of the 22 member organizations of the Neurological Alliance that are supporting our campaign. You can see them on the slide there joining the, 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 um, the meeting th this afternoon. But also thank you so much to the elected representatives from CHO7. We're delighted to have you here. Um, please do use the chat function to let people know that you're here and to introduce yourself because say it's it's great to have your representation on behalf of your constituents living with neurological conditions. And um, so as I say, I'm I'm going to hand over now to our first speaker. As I say, this campaign is run by the Neurological Alliance of Ireland, 22 neurological charities involved, and the, the campaign Patients Deserve Better is supported by Roche Products Ireland. For more information on the campaign, visit our website, www.patientsdeservebetter.ie. And I'm going to hand over to our, our first speaker, Siobhan um, Kenny, who's a who's a who's a clinical um occupational therapist, a senior um clinical specialist occupational therapist in Piedmont Hospital, uh, Piedmont Healthcare, also members of the Neurological Alliance of Ireland. And she's going to speak this afternoon um, about the rehabilitation service in Piedmont Hospital and the difference that having a community neurorehabilitation team in CHO7 would make to people with neurological conditions, their families throughout the, the CHO. I'll hand over to yourself, Siobhan. Thank you so much, Mag, uh, for your introduction, um, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, I'm going to speak about, I suppose, the experience of PMAN patients and the need for a community neurorehab rehab team from their perspective. But I just want to acknowledge from the outset that there's a huge cohort of patients who would benefit from the community neurorehab rehab intervention if it was in place um, that have not been through PMAN, and I look forward to listening to their experiences today. So just to give some context, um, in September 2020, we opened a specialist inpatient URO rehab unit here in Piedmont. So a level of, in terms of complexity, it's a level two um, centre. So that means that patients with less complex rehabilitation needs than the NRH, but patients would still need specialist inpatient URO rehabilitation. We have 15 beds. And we accept referrals for patients with a CHO, uh, with an address in CHO7. So just for those who aren't familiar, those will be people with an address in Southwest Dublin, Kildare and West Wicklow. And we'd accept the majority of our patients would come from Tala University Hospital, St. James's and NACE General Hospital. So um, we offer rehabilitation to those with rehabilitation needs um, related to their neurological condition. And we're a demonstrator site for the managed clinical rehab network. So in terms of the types of patients that we see, so this graph just represents our activity for the first two years. 
So as you can see, the vast majority of our patients would be neurovascular or stroke patients, 53%. We also have about 10% who would have a traumatic brain injury. And then we'd have a further 10% who would have peripheral nerve disorders. So that's um, patients with a condition such as Guillain-Barre syndrome or also uh, patients who have critical care neuropathy. We'd also see about 3% of patients who have non-malignant tumours and about 3% of our patients would have progressive neurological conditions. So in terms of P-mount um, in relation to the neural rehabilitation strategy, so the diagram that I have up there demonstrates the plan for the managed clinical rehab network for CHO7. So as of yesterday, actually, there's a new central referral pathway for CHO7 as part of the managed clinical rehab networks. So um, as this referral pathway, um, referrals are sent centrally and they're evaluated according to the complexity of the rehab need. So then the referrals are either sent to the NRH or they're sent here to P-Mount um, for inpatient specialist rehab. There should also be a referral pathway for less complex patients who require intensive rehabilitation at home to be sent to a community neuro rehab team. But unfortunately, this service doesn't exist at the moment. So these patients tend to be referred to P-Mount for rehab. So the availability of a community neuro rehab team would allow this co cohort of patients to be discharged earlier from the acute hospital and receive their community at their rehab at home. There's also a second cohort of patients um, who could be referred from PMount when timely to receive uh, to continue the rehab at home from the CNRT. Again, as this service doesn't exist, it means a longer stay in PMount ultimately delaying access for patients and leading to longer waiting lists. So in PMENT, we have an interdisciplinary team. So this um, consists of a consultant in rehab medicine, a skilled rehab nursing team, physiotherapy, speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, medical social work, dietetics, neuropsychology and pharmacy. And just to stress, for the provision of an interdisciplinary specialist neuro rehab service, every single member of this team is essential. And a community neuro rehab team should be no different. A full interdisciplinary team from the outset is essential if the service is to be successful. So in Mount, we offer goal-based interdisciplinary rehabilitation. So when a patient is admitted to PMENT, um, the patient, along with their therapist, would set the patient's goals. Um, and initially, these, patients, these goals would be more basic, such as walking, getting dressed, or working on communication. But as the patient recovers um, and, and as their, their rehab progresses, their goals become more complex. So some of the goals that patients will be working on are on the screen here. And some of the more complex goals could be getting out in the community, using public transport, doing their shopping or getting back to productive roles such as parenting and getting back to work. So their goals are part of a continuum of care. The average length of stay in PMENT is about eight weeks and our patients almost always have goals to work on once they're discharged from PMENT. Often these goals would need to be explored in the context of their home environment or in their own community outside of a hospital inpatient setting. Recovery doesn't happen in a straight line and yes, a lot of the recovery happens in the first six months, but there is potential for further recovery far beyond the patient's inpatient stay. Patients deserve the opportunity to work towards living a full and active life. And it's vital that patients have the opportunity to receive ongoing rehabilitation input at the required intensity following their discharge from PMENT. So there's no clear pathway for patients once they leave PMENT. Um, we have absolutely fantastic voluntary and community organisations. And there was great work done with, with the neuromapping project that, uh, that was launched last week. Some of the most common referral pathways that we, we make um, are on the screen there. But unfortunately, with all of these services, there are long waiting lists. And access to services is not consistent around the country. It's essentially a postcode lottery. Again, we have primary care services and we do refer to primary care, but again, they're long waiting lists and um, often services are for essential for discharge only. In terms of occupational therapy, the focus tends to be on equipment provision and rehab intervention can be limited. Uh, for physiotherapy, 
Often patients um, have a set number of sessions and then they're discharged. And for speech and language therapy, language services can be under-resourced um, and some SLT services can't look, offer a language intervention or it's significantly limited. So in order to look at the utilisation of a community neurohub team, if it were in place, we did an audit here in Piedmont. We looked at activity for the first three months of 2023. So in those three months, we have 40 patients who came through our service. Of these 40 patients, 25 or 62% would have benefited from CNRT input after discharge if it were in place. Six patients or 15% would not have been admitted to payment at all if there was an appropriate resource CNRT available. Eight patients or 20% could have been discharged from Piedmont earlier if there was an appropriate CNRT in place. This would have saved a total of 193 bed days in Piedmont alone, or an average of 24 days per patient. That's three and a half weeks per patient, per, per patient that they could have gone home earlier if there was an appropriate CNRT in place to, receive, to continue their rehab at home. So that's 193 bed days saved for the first three months of 2023. To just in PMAT 2023, sorry. Um, and if that, this, that projection was realized, that 772 bed days in one year saved in just PMAT if there was an appropriate resource CNRT available in CHO7. So, as you can see, these numbers are startling, and there's a huge financial impact in having patients in inpatient beds longer than they need to be. Provision of an appropriate resource CNRT would allow faster access to rehab services for patients within the community, but it would also reduce the length of stay um, for, uh, for inpatient rehab and have a subsequent impact on waiting list times. So Slaunch Care and the National the Neuro Rehabilitation Strategy talk about the right care in the right place at the right time. They, they talk, the, the new rehab strategy talks about coordinated case management and talks about a three-tiered model of complexity of need. It promises improved patient experience and talks about neuro rehabilitation as required across the continuum of care. So from a PMAN perspective, the lack of a community neuro rehab team has a huge, leads to a huge anxiety for patients at the time of discharge as there's no clear pathway for continued rehabilitation needs. Often patients talk about it's like falling off the edge of a cliff in terms of service provision. It not only stresses our patients out, but it also leads to increased uh, carer burden and stress. There are long waiting times for, the, for assessment for the services that are available, and this leads to loss of function due to lack of input. There's also the loss of potential to work on relevant goals in the context of the home environment, and this has a huge impact on patients' mental health. I have shown the experience from a PMAN perspective, and this is just a small sample of service users. And we acknowledge that there's a huge cohort of individuals who haven't accessed PMAN who would benefit from community neuro rehab intervention in CHO7. So just in conclusion, the provision of a adequately resourced community neuro rehab team would have a huge value for CHO7. It would have positive financial implications and would lead to increased access for rehab for patients in our CHO. It would have improved patient experience and improved patient outcomes and ultimately have a reduction in waiting list times. But we really need to stress that for a community neuro rehab team to be successful, it must be adequately resourced. And I just point to the British Society of Rehab Medicine recommendations for staffing levels and for SEHO, and they're available online. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to stop sharing my now. That's back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Siobhan, thank you so much. That was a fantastic presentation. I'm just really, really struck by that figure of 772 bed days. That's not in the entire CHO7. That's just for Piedmont Hospital. I'm just conscious, Siobhan, a couple of people have, have, have come in just when you were speaking there. Can you just remind people the catchment area for Piedmont, the, the area? Yeah. So we, we accept uh, referral for patients with an address in CHO7. So that covers um, Southwest Dublin, Kildare and West Wicklow. Um, normally, uh, the, the hospitals that refer to us are, are Tala, Nacy, St. James's will be the predominant referral for referring hospitals. 
And that's a really good, I suppose, temperature check for CHO7 of just the impact on hospitals that this is having, the lack of a community neurorehabilitation team. So you're saying 772 bed days just for Mm PMAND. That situation then has been replicated across other hospitals that don't have the ability to discharge then to a community. And obviously, if we can discharge patients earlier to appropriate rehab in the community, it means that we can accept patients Um, quicker from those acute hospitals and our waiting lists aren't as long. So it it has a repercussions across the board and across acute services as well. So at both ends of your service, between able to get people in from other hospitals that are waiting on your service and then being able to get people out the other side. And I suppose you've given a really good um, picture of the impact, the psychological impact as well on people with neurological conditions, the families of just feeling there is nothing after yeah, um, they're, they're, like many patients have said to me, they feel like they're falling off the edge of the cliff. There's huge anxiety at the time of discharge because patients have been in hospital for quite a time um, and they have done really well and they've made huge gains, so much so that they're able to go home and they feel like the rehab is just stopping dead. Um, we don't have outpatient services here in PMM, so we can't offer outpatient. So it's it's really down to those amazing voluntary organisations that are out there that are that mentioned on that slide and primary care services. But there's huge waiting lists on both those uh, both those ends, and it's really distressing for patients when when they've done so well and they don't know where to go for further rehab, and they do have further rehab goals. Um, and, and often they just have to wait for, for the voluntary services and the primary care services to become available and to get to the top of the waiting list for them. Yeah, and as you say, there, there's lim- very limited capacity in, in primary care that mm-hmm. people might just get a couple of sessions and then um, I say th- then it tapers off and they're left with, you know, they're not getting the service yeah. that they need. That, that's certainly our experience from, from feedback that we've heard from patients. Um, so, so, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, they're doing a great job in primary care, of course. Um, but they're just overwhelmed with referrals. Absolutely. And, and just to say as well, uh, in relation to the community neurorehabilitation teams, these are up and running in other areas of the country. It's not as if we're coming up with something here that isn't available in, in other parts of the country. What we're seeing now, and what we're seeing in, in these in these launches, I, I know a couple of our, of our electoral representatives were also at the CHO6 launch that we had last November. Um, and the the situation there is that, there, again, there isn't a, a team is funded back as far as 2018, the same as for CHO7. They were part of a network uh, pilot demonstrator project, but the teams, unfortunately, haven't appeared on the ground as yet. But there are community neurorehabilitation teams in CHO, CHOs 1 and 3. So these are a reality for neurological patients in some parts of the country, but 85% of neurological patients in Ireland don't have access to a community neurorehabilitation team as we stand. Um, I'm just going to pick up on on that lived experience piece of what this means for people living with neurological conditions and go on to our our next speaker, Neve McCarran, who's a a person living with MS in CHO7. Neve, if I can ask you to to speak now on just the lived experience of someone living with MS. And I know you've been in touch with a lot of your peers living with MS and CHO7 who would benefit from having a community access to a community neurorehabilitation team. Sorry, need we're just hearing it's it's quite difficult for people to hear you. Can you just uh maybe just adjust your sound there? Uh, it's still quite faint. We're just trying there now, Neve, and, and if not, we might just give you a break and just move on to Jill there just while you're trying to get your sound sorted. Okay, do you want to try there? It just we, sounds we, like, Neve, that maybe your mic could be covered. Or, uh, we, might, we might just come back to you there, Neve, and just let you sort it out. Maybe Sorka can maybe give you a call and sort it out in the background. Yeah. 
Um, Joe, could I move on to you? You're a person with um, early onset Parkinson's disease and, and also a founder of Early Onset Parkinson's Disease Ireland. But look, I'll let you introduce yourself. You're living within in CHO7. And just if you can speak to the, the need for a community neurorehabilitation team for CHO7. Good afternoon, everybody. Joe Condon here. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's at the age of 39, 10 years ago. My core team to date are my GP, my neurologist, and my pharmacist. I've had no referral to the multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary team like speech and language, neurophysio, OT, all the services which are key for a multidisciplinary team and keeping people healthy long in the community so that we don't need to be taking up the beds that Siobhan is trying to make the best use of and being healthy, being fit, being able to keep exercising is key for people living with Parkinson's and we need in the community local services. For me, I attend classes in Port Leash, which is a long ways to go to attend classes for people living with a neurological condition, but classes, exercise is key, it keeps you fit, it keeps you organised. And it slows the progression of the condition. So anything that can be done to slow the condition, I try to do that as best I can. I think as Minister Anne Rabbit said last week at the launch of the Neuro Rehab Programme, the age group of 18 to 65 are the last group of people. They do not have access to the HSC services, um, which is a major impact for people living with the condition. It's bad enough to be diagnosed with the condition, but not to be able to access the services like the public health nurse and other key services within the area is a major problem and something that needs to be addressed. I think good results came out of last week's meeting. We're positive, but we need to get the in-service in, in the community, whether that be in gyms, whatever facilities are available in the local community to deliver them. Let's try and get something that delivers for people and delivers sooner rather than later. Um. I suppose that's more or less all I have to say, Meg, is on it. Thank you. And thank you, Joe. That's really valuable. Thank you very much. And I suppose what you, you know, that's really important message that you're saying there, Joe, is that you know, we're we're seeing there that the, the team has been funded for CHO7 as far back as 2018. And the one thing that people with neurological conditions don't have is time. Um, you know, in, in terms of access to neurorehabilitation, they need it now, um, not two, three years from now. It is disappointing that that team has been funded, but the team hasn't appeared on the ground. And we would certainly encourage um, our elected representatives to ask questions as to why that team hasn't been established. Um, and really on behalf of your constituents with neurological conditions to recognise the importance of having a community neurorehabilitation team in place, which is government policy. These teams are available in other areas of the country, but I say 85% of, of Irish people living with a neurological condition don't have access to a community neurorehabilitation team. We might come back to Neve there to see is your sound a little bit better sorted out, Neve. We'll, we'll try. Can you hear me better now? That's much better now. Oh, good. Good. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, so I was just introducing myself. So my name is Neve McCarran and I'm 42 and I live in Rough Arnhem with my husband. Um, and I'm the reason I'm giving a little bit of background there is I have MS, but MS is not the top of my list of priorities at the moment, thankfully. Um, I work full time in a small business called Pan Research here in Rough Arnhem. And I've been here a long time. Um, so I, I put MS at the bottom of my, my priorities today, but it's always there and that might change tomorrow. Um, at the moment, I'm lucky enough that it's stable. I'm in remission. Um, I, I was diagnosed in 2010, so I've had it a long time. I've had symptoms a long time before that. Um, it has an impact, though, on everything that I do. So it impacted where we bought our house because I'm not able to do a long commute. Um, I wouldn't have been able to continue my job if I was commuting in and out to town so I can walk to work. Um, similar to that, it, it it will have an impact at some point when I might have to totally reconfigure that house to 
align myself to the wheelchair if needed. Um, so when I was invited to speak today, I did sort of think maybe I shouldn't because I don't need much support and help now. But it, that day is probably coming where I will need some help and I will need some extra resources that um, maybe I don't even have an awareness of at the moment, but they will be there at some point where I will have to rely on um, other um, medical or physical or any interventions to help me pro, um, live with MS. Um, so I've worked with MS Ireland for uh, a long time. I, I write some pieces. I've done some bits and pieces like this before. And there, so I have a lot of friends with MS who are at different stages of having their um, like, uh, their, their MS progress and what supports and things they need. Um, so I did reach out to some people and ask them their experiences as well. Um, but before I get on to that, if you don't mind me just sort of segueing a little bit, um, this, came, this came up in conversation recently and it might be kind of a, sort of, it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me, it might be interesting for other people. Um, just because somebody has a lifelong condition like MS, it doesn't mean we automatically know what we have to do when we get ill. Um, I think there's a perception that if you have a condition that it's managed and that you have a team of people supporting you and looking after you and um, some people do have a very close relationship with their medical teams and because they need to have that and that's it's fantastic to have but others don't have that experience and there's no big sort of red button that you push and say okay I'm, I'm ill today I need my help I need like let's do this um, and often when you get to the stage you need that help you're maybe not well enough to pull that help together and to, to get the resources or to look for the resources that mightn't be obvious to you. Notes here. Um, so it occurred to me because I was in hospital over Christmas, nothing to do with my MS at all. But after that, people that I spoke to seemed to think I had, I had a lot of knowledge about going to hospital and what to do. Like I haven't been in hospital with MS for nearly 10 years. So it's, 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 it's as new to me as it might be to somebody else who has never had any condition up until that point. And the reason I highlight that is that there are probably other services or facilities that people can access, but they've no knowledge about them or there are services in place in some parts of the country, but not others. And it can be difficult to navigate. Um, so bringing me back on track, like I said, I wasn't sure if my personal experience up to now was that relevant. But then I think that might be a little bit short-sighted on my part because it's relevant to everybody. Um, and I think a lot of people listening today will either have a, a neurological condition themselves or a family member with one or a friend. And once you get a diagnosis, you often hear, oh, my cousin's uncle has that or somebody else has that. And you find that there are far more many people in the club than you realise. Um, and I'd also bet you have a lot of contacts who um, are living with a condition but they haven't disclosed it or they don't discuss it or they don't share that um, and that's fine too because putting your information out there once it's out there it's out there like and I'm quite happy to talk when I can talk so I felt it was important today to speak and say like there are a lot of people like me and who need these services but they don't they ever don't have them or don't know about them or they're not not available in where we're living um you have to be careful putting out your information that maybe you don't want to share that these things are, that you have a condition. Uh, I was lucky where I was working. I could share that because I was in the process of being diagnosed while I worked here. Um, but it's not for everyone. And you don't maybe want to have to go looking for all this information if you're trying not to disclose too much about your own condition. Um, so like I said, I asked some of my MS friends of, if, about their experiences about uh, around neuro rehabilitation services. And thanks to chatting to Mags, I was aware that there are the two teams set up in the different CHOs. Um, and one of them is in the Northwest, which is where I'm from originally. And I wasn't aware that that was in place. Now, I haven't lived there for a while. But when I was speaking to a couple of friends with um, MS in Sligo and Donegal, one of them wasn't aware of it either. So the facility is there and maybe there are some services she could be availing of, but she didn't know about them. Um, and then I also have a friend who lives in Limerick and her experience has been so positive um, and through the CNRT uh, there she um, availed of OT, physio, speech and language, um, different services that to try and keep her in work for longer um, so that she didn't have to stop work dead on to, 
to deal with her MS. She was able to continue on as long as she could with the extra supports. Um, and I suppose I'll just finish. I, I, I can't emphasize enough how much how important these things are. So when Siobhan's talking about bed numbers and bed days and the costs and the, like that's people. Um, and you could have two people living in the same area or adjoining areas, and one person has access and the other person doesn't. Um, and each of those days in hospital where you might not necessarily need to be there, that's a day away from your life, a day away from your family. Um, it, it's all, it's a, the, the cost is crazy, but the, I think the cost to a person's life can be absolutely life-changing. Um, not everybody is going to have uh, the resources to leave work for eight weeks or to have the opportunity to leave their kids or to like your, your the condition is an inconvenience and to, to have to put your whole life on hold to do other bits and pieces where if it was available in the community that you could nip out for a couple of hours do it and come home um, rather than hog a bed for want of a better word for a full day for one hour of treatment um, it just doesn't add up, but the impact it can have on somebody's life is a much more relevant than maybe it's given uh, the headlines often tell you the costs rather than the impact. Um, so that was kind of the, the, the points that my friends put across to me as well. Um, and I think that's kind of where I'm at at the moment, Mags. I'm sorry now for the technical, technical issues. That's, that, that's um, great, Neve. I think you made some, you know, when you, when you did join us and your sound was okay, you made fantastic points there that, as you say, it's not all just about numbers and beds, that there is a real human story behind this. And I suppose one of the things that we're seeing with this campaign is that, that sense that other parts of the country, depending on where you're living, there's a real postcode lottery in terms of access to community neurorehabilitation teams that 15% of neurological patients in Ireland have access to a community neurorehabilitation team. That means 85% of neurological patients don't, including people with neurological conditions seeing in, in, within CHO7. And we've heard from our three speakers this afternoon highlighting the impact that it has, Siobhan, from the clinical perspective on the, the impact on a rehabilitation facility like PMANT that's trying to give people that intensive rehabilitation, but they don't have a community neurorehabilitation team to discharge people to. The impact that has on the effective running of the service and also on the, the psychological impact on the, on the people with neurological conditions and their families that are being discharged. You use the expression falling off the edge of a cliff that they, that, you know, there is that anxiety that they're being discharged to very limited services out in the community. Um, we've heard from Joe again, a, a resident in CHO7 living with early onset Parkinson's disease, just about the lack of access to that multidisciplinary team, that primary care is overloaded. You might get a couple of sessions of physio or speech and language therapy, but nothing like the intensive rehabilitation that you would get from a community neurorehabilitation team. And from Neve, as they, you know, your experience, Neve, of speaking to your peers living with multiple sclerosis in CHO7, and um, that lack of access, and knowing that a team is available in your own home county, um, in the in the northwest, that there is a team available, but not in CHO7 where you're where you're currently living. We're calling today to the elected representatives that have been very, that have been so good to join us on on the presentation this afternoon. We're calling for any representation you can make to highlight the lack, the ongoing lack of, of, a, of a community neurorehabilitation team in CHO7. That's despite funding have been made available since as far back as 2018. And I just saw some comments in the chat and concerns around that the, 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 the lack of an ability to build posts. That's a recruitment issue. I really want to stress that it's not. Um, recruitment for this team hasn't started. Um, so the team hasn't been established on the ground. So it's not a recruitment issue. It's it's a it, I suppose it's it's a lack of progress really on getting that team established, as I say, despite funding being in place. I want to thank sincerely thank all of our speakers um, for giving such a strong testimony. I would encourage people to find out more about the campaign by visiting patientsdeservebetter.ie. You can support the campaign directly contacting your elected representatives if you visit that campaign website. Um, and just to thank everyone for their support today and, and, and as they any representation they can make on our behalf to ensure that their constituents living with neurological conditions within CHO7 can have access to a community neurorehabilitation team. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon and thank you to our speakers.